All right, guys. Hello and welcome to today's lesson. This is Mr. Ludden, and today we're going to have a look at simultaneous equations and how they come up on the Leet Cert paper. You would have seen simultaneous equations before on your Junior Cert, and you would have seen something that looks like this. So where you had two equations and two unknowns. So equation number one and equation number two, and your two unknowns were your x and your y. And your job was to find out a value of x and a value of y that not only works for your first equation, but also works for your second equation. I have done a video, I've done two videos on simultaneous equations before, so one with this example and uh, one five minute sort of recap on simultaneous equations for Junior Cert. So I'll put those links in the description below. If you feel you need to brush up on your simultaneous equations before you go on to the Leaving Cert material, then uh, those two videos would be a very good place to start. But other than that, I'm going to continue on. Um, as I said, that right there in front of you is a junior cert example, but there's two ways in your leave insert that they can ask you about simultaneous equations. And I'm going to put the two examples up now. And if you'll notice, uh, each one of those examples are quite different to what you were used to at junior cert. First of all, for the first one, you're not dealing with two equations and two unknowns anymore. You're dealing with three equations and three unknowns. So equation one, equation two, and equation three. And your three unknowns are your x, your y, and your z. So as you can see, a step up from what you did in junior cert. And also for the second one, Again, you're back to your two equations and your two unknowns. So equation number one and equation number two. But if you look at your first equation there, all of a sudden they've drawn in an x squared. There's a y squared and also there's an xy, which makes your job a whole lot more difficult because if you're trying to solve uh, this question here using your method uh, that you would have used for your junior cert, um, you might run into a small bit of trouble uh, because as we know like x squared is not the same as x y squared is not the same as y and also this xy here you've got an xy uh, in your first equation you don't have one in your second equation so uh, just a couple of stumbling blocks there but we're going to go through these two exact questions uh, over the course of the next um, however long it'll take me. And also I'll go through a couple of examples of other questions involving simultaneous equations that came up in previous years as well. So we'll start with the first one. And as you can see, as I said before, uh, three equations, equation number one, let's write a proper one, equation number two, and equation number three. Um, and that's the first thing I'm going to do with all of my simultaneous equations questions. Label your actual equations because it's going to make our life a whole lot easier when we uh, get down further into the question. Uh, just before we start this particular question, I would advise you to give yourself as much space as possible and to be as organized as possible going down. Um, for the simple reason that you are going to have a lot of equations um throughout your working out so uh, it's very important to know which one is which so like our junior cert simultaneous equations the first thing we're going to do is try and line up our variables and decide which ones have the most suitable coefficients so if we remember the variables are the x the y and the z and then the coefficients are the numbers before those. So in our first equation, the coefficient of x is 2, the coefficient of y is a, and the coefficient of z is minus 3. So if we were looking at all of our equations in total, um, you'll notice that the x's, they all have the same coefficient, so the number 2. And this is going to help us in a way because our first job is going to be to take two of our equations there 
and try and eliminate uh, one of our variables. So what I'm going to do is, I can see that the coefficient of my x is there is two. Uh, two is a coefficient in equation one, two is the coefficient of x in equation number two, and two is the coefficient of x in equation number three. Um, if you were to look at the y's and the z's, uh, they're all different coefficients. So for the y's you have eight minus three and you've got plus one. I can put a one in there in front of the y. Uh, minus three z, plus two z, and plus one z as well. They're all different. So your first job is to try and find the most suitable coefficient to start off with and it will make your job a whole lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equation number one and my equation number two. So my equation number one is 2x plus 8y minus 3z is equal to minus one. I'm going to take my equation number two. So I'm going to have 2x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two together uh, to get rid of my x's. So you'll notice that my x's have the same coefficients, the number two. So I'm going to take my second equation away from my first equation. And I'll just get my red pen so you can see what I'm doing. So I want to take the whole of the first equation or the whole of the second equation, sorry, away from the whole of the first equation. So my in my second equation, this is a plus 2x, but if we're taking it away, it's going to be a minus 2x. So basically what we're doing is we're multiplying the second equation by minus 1, really, if you want to think of it like that. I'm going to have 8y uh, minus minus 3y. So a minus and a minus will give me a plus. And for my z's, if I'm taking away a uh, plus 2z, it's going to be a negative, and that's going to be a negative 2. So you'll notice that uh, I've put the new signs, well, the new, sorry, in inverted commas, uh, signs of the coefficients in circles and in a different color, just so I don't get confused between the new signs and the original signs of um, each of the variables, I suppose. So I'll just get this out of the way. I'm going to put my answer, I'm not going to put it underneath here uh, for the sake of demonstration. I'm going to put my answer over here and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so my 2x minus 2x is going to give me 0x. And I will rub that out in a minute because 0 times x is just 0x. I have 8y plus 3y, which is going to give me plus 11y. And I have minus 3z minus 2z, which is going to be minus 5z is equal to minus 1, take away another 2, is minus 3. And I'm just going to get rid of the 0x there at the start, because uh, seeing as it's 0x, we don't need that. Now, what we've made here is another equation. This is a whole new equation, but it is linked back to what we've done at the start. So you'll notice that this is the only equation now that we have that doesn't have an X in it. So we're slowly chipping away at what we've done previously, at what was given in the question even. So I'm gonna put my a box around this, and I'm going to label this not equation one, because we have that already, not equation two, not equation three. This is going to be equation number four. So we have made this now out of the information that we've been given at the start. And now your job is to try and get another equation with Y and Z in it that will uh, match up with what you've done before. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a different combination of the three equations that you have up here. You cannot pick equation number one and equation number two again. 
You cannot match them up because you've done that already. You've done that here. So you have the choice. You can pick equation number one and three, or you can pick equation number two and three. I'm going to pick equation number one and three, just for the sake of this example, but you will get the same answer at the very end if you pick equation number two and three here. So I'm going to pick 2x plus 8y minus 3z uh, is equal to minus 1. And I'm going to have 2x plus, I'm just going to put plus 1y and not plus y, just so we're totally clear on what we're doing. Uh, and the same reason I'm going to put plus 1z here as well is equal to 5. And I'm just going to change color pen. And now, if you remember, uh, we're trying to get another equation that only has x and y in it. So we're trying to eliminate our x's out of equation number one and equation number three. Again, like what we did up here with equation number one and two, we're gonna take away our second line away from our top line. So we're taking equation number three away from equation number one. So if we're taking away the bottom line, that's going to be a minus 2, that's going to be a minus 1y, that's going to be a minus 1z, and that's going to be a minus 5. So again, uh, when I take those away, normally I'd put my answer underneath here, but I'm going to put it over on the right-hand side, just so, and I'm going to put it in this box here, just so that uh, you'll be able to, I suppose, see what I've done. So, this 2x minus 2x is going to give me 0x so again i'll put that in here but again i'm going to take that away at the end but just so you can see what i'm doing we're going to have the 8y here take away 1y which is going to give me a plus 7y we're going to have minus 3z take away an 1z which is going to give me minus 4z minus 4z and again equals minus 1 minus 5 is going to give me minus 6 and let me just tidy that up I was a small bit squashed there so let me just tidy that up uh, without the 0x in it so I'm going to take out the 0x that looks a bit neater and this is a whole new equation that we have uh, with y and z in it so again, I need to label this as something. So we have four equations, four sort of unique equations already. This is going to be equation number five. And now uh, your knowledge of the junior set simultaneous equations come into play because we have two equations here with two unknowns. So basically we're back to our junior set example. And I'm just going to jump back to that. Two equations and two unknowns. And our job now is to sort out equation number four and equation number five. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, we're going to have equation number four and equation number five. Equation number four was 11y minus 5z. 11y minus 5z uh, is equal to minus 3. And my equation number five was 7y minus 4z is equal to minus 6. So I've got to line up one of my uh, variables. Um, unfortunately, my coefficient of y's, of the y's are 11 and 7, and the coefficients of the z's are minus 5 and nine, minus 4. So they're not the same just yet. So I'm just going to change my pen here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to find the lowest common multiple of my y's, but you could do it with your z's if you wanted to. Um, the lowest common multiple, lowest common multiple of uh, 11 and 7 is going to be uh, 77. So I'm going to multiply my, my equation number 4, I'm going to multiply that by 7 to get 77y. And I'm going to multiply my equation number five. I'm going to multiply that by 11 
so that I end up with uh, 77Y on that one as well. So let me just go back to my red pen. My new equation number four and my new equation number five are going to look like this. Let's start with equation number four. So I'm multiplying everything here by seven. So I'm going to end up with 77Y minus 35Z is equal to minus 21. And my equation number five, if I multiply that by 11, I'm going to get uh, 77y minus 44z uh, is equal to minus 66. And now I am going to take my equation number five away from my equation number four. And I'll just change color pens again, just so you can see what I'm doing. So if I'm taking the second equation away from the first equation, um, that's going to be a minus because I'm taking it away. If I'm taking negative 44z away from negative 35z, that's going to end up being like I'm taking away a negative. So uh, a better way of saying that is I'm adding 44z. And the same thing um, at the end here on the right hand side of my equal sign. So I'm going to be plus. So uh, my last line here is if I go through with those operations, I'm going to have zero y uh, plus nine z. So the nine z is coming from minus 35 z plus 44 z is equal to uh, 45. And the 45 there is coming from minus 21 plus 66. And I suppose a better way of looking at that is 66 minus 21. So you'll notice I have a zero y, I don't need that. And the plus nine z, I'm just gonna get rid of the plus there as well, because we know like if it just says nine, and it, if it doesn't have a minus beside it, then you can just take it as that's a positive nine. So we've got nine z is equal to 45. You've finally got down to one equation and one unknown. So the last thing you need to do here is divide both of these things by nine in order to get what Z actually is. So if you do that, you're going to get that Z is equal to 45 divided by nine is five. So you have the first of your unknowns. Now, if you remember back to your junior set simultaneous equations, once you've got one of your unknowns, you were going to substitute it back into one of your previous equations to get one of your other unknowns. And we're going to do the exact same thing here. So I'm just going to move on to um, a clean page. Um, I have Z is equal to five. I'm just going to keep that up there. And we're going to sub this into equation. You have a choice now. Uh, either equation number four or equation number five is going to help you out because um, if you think if you think about it, you know what Z is. So if you substitute into equation number four, uh, you'll have a value here. And the only unknown that you need to find out is your Y. So you can do that with equation number four or equation number five. Um, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna get the same answer. Uh, I'm gonna pick equation number four. So equation number four said 11y minus 5z is equal to minus 3. So 11y minus 5z is equal to minus 3. And I'm substituting z is equal to 5 in here. So I have 11y minus 5z uh, is 5 is equal to minus 3. 11y minus 25 is equal to minus 3. If I add 25 to both sides, I'm going to end up with 11y is equal to 22. And if I divide both sides by 11, I'm going to end up with y is equal to 2. So you've gotten your z is equal to 5, you've gotten your y is equal to 2. The last thing you have to do is find out what X actually is. So what you're going to do 
is, and I'm going to call it a new page here, you know what it says is equal to 5? You found out that y is equal to 2. You are now going to uh, sub both of these into, uh, and I'll just go back to the original question. You can either pick equation number one, equation number two, or equation number three. Um, because you know what y and z are now. So if you substitute those two values into any one of equation number one, two, or three, you will find out what x is. Now, make life easier on yourself. Um, try and stay away from your negative signs. Try and stay away from like the bigger numbers because uh, you're more likely to make mistakes with bigger numbers or negative numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute it into equation number three because equation number three seems the most manageable. Again, you can do it with equation one or equation number two, but uh, best not to make life overly difficult on yourself. So equation number three says 2x plus y plus z is equal to 5. 2x plus y plus z is equal to 5. And we're substituting uh, my z and my y in. So I'm going to have 2x plus, and I'll just put brackets here. Uh, just out of habit because uh, I put brackets in when I'm substituting in just in case there's a negative sign and just to remind myself to apply that negative sign as well. Now as it happens there's no negative signs so this is just force of habit. Uh, plus 5 is equal to 5 and I'm going to end up with 2x plus, plus 2 plus 5 that's going to be 7 is equal to 5. If I take 7 away from both sides I'm going to end up with 2x uh, is equal to minus 2 and if I divide both sides by 2 I'm going to end up with x is equal to minus 1 and finally at the end of all that you have your uh, three values you were looking for and they're on this page here so your z your y and your x um, but just to make sure so we're going to say that x is equal to minus 1 uh, y is equal to 2 and z is equal to 5. And if you're looking at marking schemes, uh, that's the marking scheme there. Uh, they've basically done the exact same thing as I've done um, over the last 20 minutes. Um, but maybe you might find that a bit more beneficial. Uh, I'll just draw your attention to the, one of the last lines here. They've gotten the same answers as us and you've seen they've, they've lined them up together so that as an examiner I can see where your answers actually are. And the last part here, you don't need to do the last part but it's just if you were unsure um, or you wanted to make sure that your three values were correct. You notice that uh, that's your equation number one, that's your equation number two and that's your equation number three. And you'll notice that they've substituted your x is minus one so they've substituted minus 1 in for x, 2 in for y, and 5 in for z. And they've got minus 1, 2, and 5. And if you remember back to uh, the actual question, just remember minus 1, 2, and 5. Uh, your answers were minus 1, 2, and 5. So what you're saying there is that when you substitute back in your numbers, well, for x, y, and z, well, it lines up with the original question, so you know you were correct. So uh, that's just if you weren't sure what was going on, or if your answers made sense even. I have a step-by-step -step way of doing that as well, basically walking through uh, exactly what I've talked about in the last 20 minutes. Um, this will be in the description below as well, so I'm not going to dwell too much on this. Um, if you want to read through that, as I said, it's in the description. Okay, so that's the first type of simultaneous equation that they can ask you for your leaving sir. Three equations, three unknown. The second one is like this. And this exact question came up in 2016. And it asks you, well, sort of the same thing, the same idea as other simultaneous equations. You need to find out a value for x and a value of y that works for both of these equations. We're going to start this by uh, labeling our equations. 
just like the last one, equation one and equation number two. But we're going to have to come at this a different way than uh, our previous sort of elimination method. And what we're going to use is a substitution method for this question for the reason that x squared is not the same as x. And if you were to try and eliminate those um, against each other, you'd end up in awful trouble. You might say, oh, well, why can't I multiply my second equation by x? And I'll end up with uh, 2x squared plus 3xy uh, minus 1x. And you might think, oh, like I've gotten an xy here and that lines up with this. I've got an x squared here that might line up with my x squared in the future. But you notice that you haven't got a y squared at all. And if you went multiplying your second equation by y squared, uh, all of a sudden you're going to end up with 2x squared y squared, uh, 3 uh, y cubed, once you multiply that by a y squared, and your minus 1 y squared. So yeah, that's going to be an awful mess. So we need to come at this a slightly different way. And if you remember substitution, like substituting a value, a number in for a variable, um, it's basically just an extended idea of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation that doesn't have the x squared or the y squared in it. So we're going to take our equation number two. And this is a 2x plus 3y is equal to minus one. And we're going to try and isolate either the x or the y. It's up to you which one you want to isolate, but for this example, I'm going to isolate the x. So I'm going to say that two x, I'm going to take three y away from both sides. So take three y, take three y. And I'll just move this down just so we can see exactly what I'm doing. Again, use as much space as possible. Um, just to show you're working and be clear in your own head what you're doing. Minus 1, minus 3y. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get x on its own. Uh, x is equal to minus 1, minus 3y, all over 2. Uh, I do have notes on this as well. Uh, and that looks like this. This will be in the description as well below, and I will walk through it at the end of the question as well, just in case you're worrying. So we've got x on our own, and now what we're going to do is we are going to sub this fact that x is equal to minus one minus three y all over two. We're going to sub that into equation number one. And it's going to look messy enough, and your biggest problem after that is going to be to tidy up what you're left over with. So let's see what this will actually look like. x is minus 1 minus 3y over 2. And my equation number 1 is okay, x squared plus xy uh, plus 2y squared is equal to 4. That was my equation number 2. And I knew that x was equal to uh, minus 1 minus 3y all over 2. Uh, Let's do a proper 2, 2. So we are substituting this in here. So let's be careful. I have x squared here. So I'm going to have minus 1 minus 3y all over 2 squared plus xy, so minus 1 minus 3y all over 2 times y, because that y there, move that y there, plus 2y squared is equal to 4. And now, I know you have a lot of uh, things going on in the line that you're just after doing, but you'll notice that you have one equation now with one unknown. There's no x's in this equation that you're after written, writing down. So your job now is to tidy up what's in the box here. 
and we're going to go through that now i'm going to take it step by step because there is a couple of bits that uh, may pose problems okay so let's get started and um, the first thing we're going to try and simplify is our first term here so we've got a fraction being squared so if you remember your laws of indices that's the same thing as saying minus one minus three y squared all over two squared plus now you've got your second thing here which is y multiplied by all of this so just be careful there and um, that's the same thing as minus one minus three y over two multiplied by y over one and if you were to think about that as multiplying fractions well if you're multiplying fractions you're multiplying the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom so what you're going to end up with is uh, minus one y squared sorry minus one y because you're multiplying the minus one here by the y and then minus three y squared up on top seeing as both of those are minus i'm just going to put brackets around those and um, because we'll have to deal with that in a line or two time um, and then the bottom two multiplied by one is two and our last thing plus two y squared um, the four here on the other side is the equal sign i'm going to take four away from both sides uh, i don't need it uh, so i'm going to have minus four is equal to zero because with everything going on here um, i'd like to have everything over one side of the equal sign uh, just so i can see like when i simplify this down when i'm going to have my y squared my y's if there's anything else that pops out so we're going to keep going with this line here um if i was to square uh this here um i'm just going to take the top of this fraction here i'm going to break this down if i was to square that this is just sort of like an aside i'm going to tackle this in a sort of rough work here rough work so minus 1 minus 3y all to be squared is the same thing as minus 1 minus 3y times minus 1 minus 3y. And if we were to multiply uh, our brackets, we would get uh, 1. So minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. Minus 1 times minus 3 is plus 3y. Minus 3y times minus 1 is plus 3y. And minus 3y times minus 3y would give me plus 9y squared and if we were to simplify that and if I adjust this all the way along I would get uh, 1 plus 6y 1 plus 6y uh, plus 9y squared so I just said I'd do that bit out there in my rough work um, just because if I was to write that on every single line with what I'm doing, um, it would clog up the whole page, I suppose. So if you have a big equation like the one that we have here, there's no harm in taking it bit by bit and sort of working it out bit by bit in your rough work and then putting it back into your original equation to sort of simplify it. So uh, on my next line, instead of my uh, minus 1 minus 3y squared here that's the same thing as the 1 plus 6y plus 9y squared that I've done down here so I'm just going to pop in uh, my new answer for that so I'll have uh, 1 plus 6y plus 9y squared and that was all over 2 squared now we know the two squared is four, so I'm going to just pop that in there. And I don't think I'd actually simplified anything else there. So we're literally just taking the last three terms uh, as they are. So I'm going to have plus minus one minus three y all over two. Uh, plus my two y squared minus my four is equal to zero. And I'll just make sure that I got that correct. 
plus 2y squared minus 4, and I have my minus 1 minus 3y squared. Oh, minus 1, yeah, okay, minus 1y minus 3y squared. Be careful there. Um, as I was looking at my previous question here, I was looking at this part here, when I should have been looking at this part here. So just be careful um, with this. As with your other simultaneous equations, being as organized as possible will get you very far in this question. So that's what I have. Now you'll notice that uh, I've got two fractions. And I'll just tell you this bit up here, it's annoying me a bit. Minus, okay, that's a bit better. Um, I've got two fractions going on here, four and two. So what I would really like is to multiply everything in my equation here by something so that my fractions disappear. So if you think about it, multiplying everything by four will get rid of um, uh, both my fractions. If you think of it as an actual fractions question, that's two y squared all over one minus four all over one, and the highest or sorry, the lowest common multiple of one, one, two, and four is four. So if I multiply it by four, that'll get rid of the whole lot of them. So uh, I'll just put that here by four. So I'm multiplying my first thing here by four, which is just going to get rid of uh, the denominator. So I'm going to have one plus six y plus nine y squared plus, well, if I'm multiplying this by four, uh, I'll be multiplying it by four, but it's already been divided by two. So if you think about it, if I'm multiplying by four and then dividing by two, that's the same thing as multiplying uh, it by two. So what I'm going to end up with is plus, 2 times minus 1y minus 3y squared and then I need to uh, multiply the last two things by 4 as well so I'm going to end up with plus 8y squared minus 16 is equal to 0 and if you notice from uh, the line up on the top of the screen there to the line that you have now I know there's a lot of things going on but we're getting there uh, we've gotten rid of the fractions so it makes it a small bit easier to work with now we still have some brackets in the middle there to work out so let's work those out uh, I still have 1 plus 6y plus 9y squared plus uh, oh well let's not overshoot the runway there I've just rubbed out that plus um, plus 2 times minus 1y would be minus 2y and plus 2 times minus 3y squared would give me minus 6y squared. I still have my plus 8y squared and my minus 16 from at the end is equal to 0. And now your job is to gather your like terms. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my y squared and I'll put one line underneath those. So we've got 9y squared minus 6y squared which will give me 3y squared plus 8y squared, which will give me 11y squared. So I've gathered all my y squares together. Now we're going to gather our y's together. I'll put two lines underneath those. And that's it for now. Uh, we're going to have 6y minus 2y, which is equal to plus 4y. And finally, we're going to take uh, whatever's left over, the things without the y's, the constants. So we're going to have 1, and I'll put 3 lines underneath that, and my minus 16, 3 lines underneath that. 1 minus 16 would give me minus 15. We're going to have equal to 0. And now your reward at the end of all of that is that you have a quadratic to deal with. So two ways about going about dealing with a quadratic if you want to find out what y is. You can use your minus b formula. And so let me start a new page. 11y squared plus 4y minus 15 is equal to 0. So you have a choice, uh, either minus b formula or guide number method. And I've done a video on both of those things. Uh, before so I'll put that in the description below and um, I'm just going to jump 
straight to the answer, I suppose. I'm going to sort of half do the guide number method there. Um, but it might be an exercise for yourself if you want to just make sure that I'm right. Um, use the minus b formula or use the guide number method uh, just for your own sake, for your own peace of mind to make sure that the answers I'm getting are correct. If you had done this with the guide number method in your brackets, what you would have ended up with is uh, 11y plus 15 and you would have ended up with y minus 1 is equal to zero and when you took that apart you would have had well you've got this multiplied by this is equal to zero so one of these things has to be zero if you're multiplying two things together uh, and your answer has to be zero well one of your original two things has to be zero otherwise um, you will not be able to get zero as your answer so you're going to have 11y plus 15 is equal to zero or you would have y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now when you sort this out, you're going to have minus 15, ooh, minus 15, you're going to have 11y is equal to minus 15. And when you divide both sides by 11, you're going to have y is equal to minus 15 over 11. That's your first answer. Or you're going to have y minus 1 is equal to 0. And this one a bit easier to work with if I add 1 to both sides. I'm going to end up with y is equal to 1. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to take my two answers there. y is equal to minus 15 over 11. Uh, y was equal to 1. Um, you've gotten two values for y here, and you just got to be careful at the very, very end. Uh, if you've got two values for y, then you're going to have two values for x as well, and both of those values for x are going to correspond to one of your answers here. So I'm just gonna break this down the middle just so you can see what I'm doing. If you think back to your original question, like you're nearly there, you have two values for y, but you're going to have to pick one of the equations here to substitute your values for y back into so that you can find out what x actually is. Now it's up to you which one you want to choose, but there's definitely an easier one to work with, and that's equation number two, because you're not dealing with x squareds or y squareds. So I'm gonna say two x plus three y is equal to minus one. Two uh, x plus three y equals minus one. Two x plus three y equals minus one. And what we're going to do is we're going to sub into sub into we're going to take one of our values for y substitute it into our original equation and get a value for x and we're going to do the exact same thing with our other value for y so it's going to look like this we're going to have 2x plus 3 times minus 15 over 11 is equal to minus 1 uh, we're going to have 2x minus 45 over 11 is equal to minus 1. 2x is equal to minus 1 uh, plus 45 over 11. So there, in that line, I added 45 over 11 to both sides, just in case you're wondering. Now, from here, there's two ways you can go about doing this. If you want to change your minus 1 to a minus... Uh, 11 all over 11 then you can sort it out with uh, your fractions if you want to or once you get to here like you've gotten 95 percent of the hard work done if you want to just put that into your calculator you're going to get that 2x is equal to uh, 34 all over 11 and if you divide both sides by 2 and uh, no that's messy that's a fraction on top of a fraction and um, i'm just going to put it leave out my uh, rough work for that reason it looks a bit messy uh, if you divide both sides by 2 so if you put 34 all over 11 into your calculator divided by 2 you're going to get x is equal to uh, 17 all over 11 so what that means is that when you substitute 17 all over 11 and in for x and minus 15 all over 11 in for y 
then that'll work for your two, uh, the original two equations in your question. Now, if you're trying to figure that out with trial and error, that'll be extremely difficult to do because minus 15 over 11 and 17 over 11 are, uh, they're not numbers that immediately like jump out at you. So, uh, there was one other answer. Uh, when y is one, we have to substitute it into our equation. So we're gonna get two x plus three times one is equal to minus one. Two x plus three is equal to minus one. If I take three away from both sides, I'm gonna get two x is equal to minus four. If I divide both sides by two, I'm gonna get x is equal to minus two. And again, my other pair here are uh, when x is minus two and y is one, when I substitute those into the two original equations, um, that works as well. So I'm gonna quickly walk through each of those steps again and um, just see if I can jog your memory back. First thing you're gonna do is take your equation that doesn't have the x squared or the y squared or the xy and try and get x or y on its own. Um, in this question, like there was no difference in, I suppose, like difficulty in getting the x or the y on its own. So I got the x on its own and I ended up with this here. I then substituted that back into my other equation, my equation number two, the one that I hadn't used. And I ended up with this monster here, that one. And your job at the end of all that was to tidy that up. Now your knowledge of squaring fra um, fractions come up. Your knowledge of like multiplying by fractions come up and multiplying brackets and um, simplifying terms. And then all of a sudden you had a quadratic at the end. So your knowledge of your minus B formula and your guide number method were called into play. Then when you got your two answers, you had to remember that well, yeah, I've gotten two answers for y, but remember the question. I needed to find out what x was as well. So you needed to take each one of those values um, and substitute it back into one of your original equations and find out your corresponding x value. Um, this is what it looks like in the marking scheme. It's worth 15 marks, and obviously they've skipped a few lines. And you can see that uh, they've given you the two options here. At the start, uh, this is this bit here is exactly what we've done now they've skipped quite a lot of lines and it would be very difficult for you in an exam to go from uh, let's say line number two to line number three here but uh, I suppose this is just for show just to give us an idea of what's going on the isolated x substituted in got their quadratic uh, got their two y values uh, substituted it back in and then got their two x values or, uh, and this is what I was talking about, you could have isolated your y um, at the start as well and substituted in, you would have gotten two values for x um, and then substitute those back in, gotten your two values for y. And if you'll notice, your answers uh, are the exact same for each of those methods, except in the first one, they got their y's first. In the second one, they got their x's first. Uh, 15 marks for that. And, um yeah you would have gotten your 10 marks for a fully correct substitution into your quadratic so uh i suppose getting to is that getting to there fully correct substitution into your quadratic yeah that's as far as i can tell getting as far as here Getting to this line here will get you your 10 marks. So even knowing how to set up that question got you two thirds of the marks. So uh, yeah, a very handy 10 marks to get, I suppose. Okay, um, guys, that's the two examples. Um, I realize I've been talking for 49 minutes. So I'm just gonna quickly go through uh, where this came up in other exams as, or exam questions as well. And 2013, it came up like this. The one thing you had to be careful of there was the half. Um, same procedure, same everything, except the half and oh, five over two as well. Um, it might have been an idea at the very, very start to multiply those two by two, 
just to get rid of that and then you could have gone with uh, your original equation number one your new equation number two and your new equation number three um, and that's your uh, solution there if you want it um, I'm not going to dwell on this if you want that solution uh, pause the video and you can take that down um, this question came up in 2018 again 15 marks and again a simultaneous equations question again uh, some sort of curveball at you here you notice that your first two equations equation number one and equation number two have uh, x y's and z's in them your equation number three does not have a y so uh, this actually makes your life a whole lot easier because all you do in that case is take your equation number one and your equation number two isolate the y's and eliminate them and you'll be left with an equation with x and z in it and then just use your equation that you got with x and z from equation one and equation number two and use it with your equation number three uh, 15 marks and that's a solution there for you again if you want that you can pause the video now uh, this question came up in 2012 uh, I have a solution here for it. It's like the second one that we've done. Um, and again, if you want that solution, I'm not going to dwell on that. Uh, you can pause the video and uh, take a look at it. Um, just to wrap this up, I suppose, uh, your key points, uh, these will be in the description. Um, this is for when you have three equations and three variables and this one here is when you have two variables an x and a y uh, and two equations where one of them has an x squared a y squared and an xy and that should be where one of them um again i'm not uh, those are in the description so i'm not going to dwell on those and um, i hope that was some help and very best of luck with those if I've forgotten anything, I'll mention it in the comments below. But uh, as of now, I think that's all I have to talk about. Thanks for listening, guys.